Hi, my name is Heidi Totten, Marketing Director at Wisdom Window, and I am here with the lovely Chris Miles. Sorry, I just, uh, lovely, lovely, you know, we have the same business coach, and she calls everybody lovely, male or female, and so it's just kind of stuck, I think, over the years to call everybody the lovely and then their name. So I am so excited to have Chris here today. This webinar is focused on finding $5,000 in one hour, which seems like, whoa, how do you do that? Except that I have actually attended this webinar, and yes, it is possible to find $5,000, especially if you're a business owner, in one hour using the principles that Chris is about to teach us. So I am just going to go through and tell you a little bit about Chris. He is the cash flow expert, and he is a leading authority on how to quickly free up and create cash flow for thousands of his clients, entrepreneurs, and others internationally. So you work with people all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And he's also an author and a radio show host and has been featured in US News, CNN, Money, Bankrate.com, and has spoken to thousands internationally, getting them fast financial results. Chris truly is the financial advocate for the entrepreneur, and in fact, his clients save an average, or find an average, of $33,000 per year in their business. He consistently teaches audiences how to do what no other financial advisor can or will do, and in order to achieve financial prosperity. So. We are going to turn the time over to Chris, and I'm going to be here, but he is going to run the PowerPoint presentation that he's going to use. But first, Chris, just you know, tell us a little bit about your background and your story. Yeah, so uh, I, I kind of started like everybody else, basically doing the thing that I don't do right now, right? Um, I actually started out as a sociology major in college, uh, but I wanted to go into business consulting. And so I figured if I was going to do that, I might as well start a business. And the first business opportunity I had Came, that came up was actually becoming a financial advisor. And I did that for four years. I really came to like it. I dropped out of college completely with one class to go, which was uh, really fantastic, right? Um, dropped out of college, started becoming a financial advisor. Um, but I kind of like to almost refer to myself, almost like Disney has Imagineers. I'm someone who likes to cr be creative, but also I like to experiment and test things and be scientific about it. And so uh, as a result, I said, you know, I, I want to see evidence. I want to see this stuff really working. And as I tried stuff out, I realized that one thing about the traditional financial industry is that it doesn't work. It's a bunch of crap, to say the least, right? And so, uh, so anyways, I can say crap, right? No, no, no crap. No crap. Just Sorry. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, so it, so anyways, I, I realized it wasn't working, right? It wasn't getting people the results they wanted. Or if they were to get results, it was always about how about 20, 30, 40,000 years from now before you finally get any real financial results. And I just didn't think that was acceptable because I would look at real life and I'd see people that were making millions a year. And the cool thing is, and the reason why I'm the financial advocate for the entrepreneur is because the one place they make money is in their business. That's the one place. You look at the richest people in the world, every single one of them has a business. Even if they invest, it's still a business. You don't ever see people get on the Forbes 400 list by, uh, I'm shaking this table a lot, aren't yeah. I? Earthquake in Utah. Ah! No. no, it's it's good. It's just, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm totally throwing you off, aren't I? So, nope, not even at all. No, Go you're, ahead. you're used to me now. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, I realized that, wait, it, this has got to be different. There's got to be something different about this. So uh, what I realized is that it's, it's going to be in the business that people got to invest. And, uh, and as a result, when I started to see that happening, I said, I can't be in integrity and teach this stuff anymore. There's just no way I can keep teaching it and, and tell people that they're become financially free when it's just not going to happen. I hope that's blunt enough for you, but that's kind of the way it is. It, it is really true. In fact, um, where were we? We were at, um, at an academy a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and some of the um, some people were talking about how like their 401ks aren't worth anything. You no. know, like they're really and and when we look at taxes in the future and how much we're going to be taxed out of the 401k, it's really just a, a savings account for nothing. Yeah. You know, that we're really not going to be able to survive on it. And so that's why I'm really excited about these principles that you teach because. Um, you know, for me, when I, uh, and, and I've been kind of a student of yours for the past year or so, yeah. and for me, when I think of my business and I think about, um, you know, where I'm allocating money and what I'm doing, I shift my thinking into stewardship, which is what right. you're going to talk about. And that's really important and something that not a lot of people teach, especially financial advisors, is, is how to um, 
to not be a, a saver or a spender, but to be a good steward. And so, you know, I'm really excited to get started. And we have the um, a PowerPoint presentation for you to watch. We'll just kind of jump back and forth between the PowerPoint presentation and uh, you know talk about these things. So excellent. Let's get started. All right, one second here. That is right. Why isn't it letting me? Okay, there we go. All right, so hopefully you all can see this. And I'm going to turn over the mouse reins, whatever, to Chris, <laughs> and we'll get power. started. <laughs> I've got the power now. All right. So as we said, my, my whole goal and objective here is to do something that you've probably never had happen to ha ever have happened to you in one hour, and that's to help you find $5,000. Now, that's in the next year. It doesn't mean you'll find $5,000 in just one hour. Like all of a sudden, poof, it, it appears. Um, this will require action on your part. It will also require commitment and real dedication to make this happen. But I'm, I'm telling you that it's, it's virtually almost impossible for almost anybody to at least find at least $5,000 over the next year, especially on these few things I'm going to teach you. So the one thing is I want to make sure this is well worth your time, that you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck per minute. Um, Since this is free, that's, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. It's a huge bang. <laughs> it's like a bam or a boom, right? Yes. So, uh, so anyway, so let's talk about that. So find $5,000 in one hour. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the claim. That's the bold, the bold claim. Some people find more. Some people find right about that. But... Uh, that's what we're going to try to do here today. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is that cash flow creates freedom. It's through cash flow that you create freedom. I want you to imagine this. You know, if you're, if you're, please, you know, hopefully you're not uh, on your phone driving or something like that. But uh, ideally, if you're, if you're in a place where you can sit, I want you just to close your eyes for a second, and I want you just to imagine your current financial situation. When I talk about cash flow, I talk about how much money's coming in versus how much is going out. When you have positive cash flow, you have more money coming in and income than what you're spending each month. When you have negative cash flow, you're spending more than what you're making. Now imagine for a minute, just your current situation, that all of a sudden your, your income dropped by $2,000 a month. $2,000. So now whatever you're making today, all of a sudden you lost $2,000 a month. How are you feeling right now? What kind of emotions are coming up? What conversations are you having with your family or with your spouse? Or what kind of things are going through your head right now? You know, what kind of things are you doing or not doing? Feels pretty uncomfortable, doesn't it? Okay, now let's get out of that picture. Now let's get into back into your current situation again. So you can breathe and say, Ah, oh, so glad I'm not there where I'm two thousand dollars less a month. Now, imagine having two thousand dollars more a month in income. So you got a $2,000 raise in your income. Now what's possible? What kind of emotions are you feeling now? How are you reacting? How are you responding? What are the conversations you're having with your spouse or your kids at this point? What things are you doing? Did you feel your imagination open up a little bit more? Did you feel yourself relax? That right there, that feeling that you're getting right now, that is what financial freedom is like. Now I'll tell you one thing is I, I told you that uh, you know I was I quit being a financial planner. The crazy thing is that what I learned right after that, this is 2006, I quit in March of 2006, said I will never teach financial stuff again. I know, that's ironic. <laughs> but uh, but I, I really felt like I was deceiving people. But I said before I try to teach anybody anything again, I better do it myself. And so for the next few months I was getting really excited learning a lot of these principles we're talking about today and what ended up happening is as I started to change the way that I saw the world and especially the way I saw money, in fact as I pretty much challenged everything I was taught as a financial advisor and in fact started doing the opposite of what I was taught as a financial advisor, it was amazing just how cool it was to see that as my money freed up and things got better and I started to create streams of income coming in where I was working maybe two to four hours a week. So if you ever heard of Tim Ferriss' Four Hour Work Week, uh, the guy I wrote a book with, I co-wrote a book with, awesome guy. But man, like if you ever read that book, I mean, it was it was just like that. It was like four hours a week where I was able to start referring out business and doing things and getting compensated for it, to the point where I actually didn't actually have to keep working anymore. And that was by that July. 
So March was when I quit. July of 2006 was when I could actually say I could retire. And it was such a weird place to be because I had always imagined retirement being where you had to save thousands, well, really more like millions of dollars in the bank and live off the interest to even be able to get to that place. But what I found out and what I discovered is that I didn't need to do that. In fact, I had $2,000 in the bank when I first got to that place. And, uh, but I had money coming in, that cash flow coming in, just like you felt, money coming in more than what I needed for my expenses. And that made all the difference in my perspective. What was even cooler is that eventually the savings would follow it too and everything else. And that's why cash flow creates freedoms because when you free up and you increase your cash flow, what happens you create more options. Did you notice that when you had that feeling you felt like there was more options, there's more things you could do, uh, more ways you can express yourself and be free. That's where real freedom comes from. That is financial freedom. Not having millions in the bank because I've known people being financially broke with millions in the bank. They feel impoverished. They have that poverty mindset, feeling like they can never have enough. And you can't do that. And that's where this next slide comes in here. Is that really when it comes to the bulk of money, I call this the wealth curve. In the middle, in the middle is the bulk of where all the money is. And the outskirts is where money is not. This is where the, the poor and the middle class are on the outskirts. The wealthier in the middle. And what you realize, there's really three different paradigms here. On the left-hand side, you see spender. What do spenders do really well? They spend. Cool. All right, next. Savers, what do they do really well? They save, right? Obviously. Now, I would also add, too, under spenders, there's also what I would call gamblers. These are the extreme spenders. These are the people that believe that sky's the limit, that, hey, let's just go and, you know, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, and, you know, you're just the gambler, right? <laughs> I know. Did no I just get a Kenny? Walk away. Did no we just get Kenny? Run. I just got Kenny Rogers stuck in your head, didn't I? Well. Isn't that yeah. awesome? Uh, we used to listen to that all the time when I was growing up. So. <laughs> I did too. Uh, him and Dolly Parton, gotta love him, right? So, anyways, uh, before I start making Dolly Parton jokes, let's get back to spender and gamblers. So, gotcha. gamblers, uh, you know, what? It's kind of interesting because they believe they're in abundance, but in reality, they're not. They actually are. They believe that taking high risk will create high returns, but in reality, they just they pretty much play big and lose big. You know, we have a friend, one of our business co you know coaches, that says, "Play big, play bold." Um, these people would also be play stupid, <laughs> so uh, you just have to add that to it too, right? Yeah. So those are the gamblers, and they're part of the spender side. They tend to use money and blow through money, where savers, they tend to hoard it. They tend to not use it. They tend to save and save and save, pay off all their debt. They feel guilty if they have any debt. They feel guilty if they don't save enough. Um, they feel guilty if they spend any money, especially if you go on the extreme of the hoarder side. And those people are also living in fear and scarcity. Now, I want you to understand that fear and scarcity those kind of emotions, even greed or impatience, those emotions do not pay you a dime. In fact, they only cost you money. If you want to find a quick way to lose money, be in scarcity, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the very thing that drives money away. And this is the number one reason why people aren't making money. In fact, if you got nothing else from this, from the strategies that I teach after this, is the thing you'll learn is that really it's the scarcity that probably costs you more than $5,000 in a year. It's the decisions that you make out of fear or doubt, worry, when you're doing it out of greed or impatience. Those of you who are in business, you know what impatience does to your business, right? When you get really urgent, you're trying to make money fast, you find out that you tend to work harder for less money. You tend to drive results away. We don't want to be in that place. That scarcity drives people away from your life. They drive money simply just right out of your life to the point where you wonder why you're struggling so hard and you're probably stuck in what feels like you're in this rat race. Have you ever felt that before? Even just for a moment. That's the kind of thing we want to avoid. And all of us have been there. All of us have had some sort of scarcity because, well, if you've ever felt scarcity, welcome to the human club. To join, the, join the other six billion of us, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, is it still six billion? Something like that, right? I think we're up to uh, like seven. <laughs> seven <laughs> wait, wait a few minutes. Maybe by the time you watch this, it'll be eight. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, either like way. baby boom going on. We're, that's a really big club to be a part of. It's a scarcity club. We, we all know it. What I want you to do is get you in a place of abundance where we come in the middle. You take the best of the spender and the saver, put it together as a steward. And the stewards, they're willing to be wise with their money like the saver is, but they're also willing to use it like the spender. They just don't blow it. The stewards are the ones that are willing to take money. They're willing to use money in a way that creates more value and creates more production and able to better people's lives, and, and when they better people's lives, the money comes back again to them. 
And so money is, is meant to flow. This is why we talk about cash flow, not cash lake, right? <laughs> we don't want a cash pond of algae and rotten crap that stinks, especially like the Salt Lake. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, you know, larvae, you can name it. Like everything that's gross is in a, is in a nice stagnant pond. But when there's flow, there's life, like the Amazon, the Nile. Think about the massive amounts of life that's done. I can't remember how many millions of gallons per second jumps out of the Amazon, but it's a lot. You know, and it's the same thing here. I mean, you can't remember? I haven't even learned that. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it a couple times. And, was, and that's why I say I can't remember because I've read it a few times. It's like 40 million gallons. I don't know. It's, it's some crazy astronomical number. Needless to say, you will not be thirsty, right? And it's the same thing with money is that there's no need to be scarce or thirsty because there's a plenty of it. The problem is that most people don't allow it to flow. They don't allow it to come in and flow out in a way that's productive. Some people, when they're spenders, they let it flow in, come in and flow out, but they flow out and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't come back. So you have to keep struggling to keep spending, right? And now here's another way I like to say it too, is that stewards are creators, while spenders and savers are consumers. Stewards are creators, while spenders and savers are consumers. People in the consumer mentality, they, they will produce, they will, they will create money so they can consume it. That's their whole goal. Create money, consume it. Even if it means that they save it, the eventual goal is to consume and possibly consume as little as they can so that they can live out the, the rest of their lives with lots of money, like a pile of cash sitting there like Scrooge McDuck has in his nice little bank on DuckTales, right? So there we go. There's another reference. There's your movie I, went from, reference. I went from Kenny Rogers and I moved to the 80s with DuckTales. And you threw in the Amazon. Oh, and I threw in the Amazon, but that's yeah. like forever. So uh, I will move to the 90s and the 2000s. Just wait. So, right. so creators, they do the opposite. Remember, consumers, they, can, they will create money to consume it. But creators, they consume money so they can create more money. In fact, it, what's interesting is creators consume more money than consumers do because they know that they can use money in a way it comes back to them. They put money into their business because they know they can make it come back. They put money in things that where, you know, you put money in things where you're willing to use it for investing or ways to create cash flow today. That is the big distinction. It's not about saving, accumulating, and hoping to live off the interest. That is the long, sure way to becoming poor or middle class at best. That's it. And so if you want to create true financial freedom, it's got to come from this perspective. By the way, I hope you understand why it's so important I teach this, is that one thing I teach that's opposite of what you hear out there today is that it's principles first, strategy second. Principles first and strategy second. Almost everybody tries to teach you the strategies, and then people wonder why the strategies have a hard time working and implementing. And the reason is, is that who cares if you got the car key if you don't know how to use the car, right? The strategy doesn't matter. You can read the entire owner's manual, but if, ultimately, if you don't know how to use it or if you don't have the right engine in place, it's not going to work. And so you've got to make sure that you're using the right principles, and then the strategies become almost a natural byproduct. They become easier to understand and very simple. So with that in mind, let's go into the strategy, shall we? We shall. Let's do it. So first is tracking your money. You have got to know what's going on. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is expensive. <laughs> uh, Adish just wanted to let you know that 7.2 billion currently on the earth. Thank you, Adish. Adish. Thank Hi, Adish. Hi, you know, that's, a, that's a virtual high five. Thank you so much. 7.2 billion. Now we've got to figure out how many gallons from the Amazon. So we're stay tuned. Yeah, could you look that up, Adish? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Check all my facts. Gotta love it. So we got to make sure we're tracking our money. Um, you know, you can't get from, from point A to point Z if you don't know where point A is. I mean, how many of us have ever gotten frustrated with our phones when we're trying to use our GPS? We put in our destination, but it can't tell us where we are. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of impossible to use the GPS. It sits there spinning. It drives me nuts. It just drives me nuts. I'm like, come on, find me. You know, I feel like almost like Jimmy, uh, not Jimmy Gaffigan. He's awesome too, but um, Louis C.K. when he's like, can you give it a minute to go to space? Come on, you know, yes. be a little patient, right? Great video. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, that's the one thing is that we keep we keep hoping to get somewhere, but we don't know where we're starting from. And how can we ever get from point A to point Z if we don't know where point A is? So you got to start by knowing what the numbers are. By the way, for those of you in business, this even goes to another level. You've got to know not just the money numbers. You got to know your marketing numbers. You got to know what's going on in your business real time. You got to know what's effective, and what's happening. Otherwise, you're just guessing. 
You're like, uh, now moving into the 90s. You ready for this? Got it. Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Love that movie. I never saw it. Oh, my goodness. We're still going to educate you. So uh, in that movie, if you've ever seen it, there's a, there's a guy that makes fun of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, they make fun of the blind guy. who be, His name is Blinken, right? So his name is Blinken. It's a Mel Brooks movie, so you got to make fun of it. Blinken standing up on a, a watchtower. And they're saying, Blinken, what are you doing? He says, I'm guessing. I'm guessing no one's coming. And, uh, and that's pretty much what he's doing. They're like, get down from that tower. And then he falls down, right? So uh, the whole point is, like, if you don't know, <laughs> I, I, I had a point. I really did. Um, the thing is, you can't drive blind, right? you got to know where you're at. you got to know where you're going. You can't just guess your way through it. You can't guess your way through the numbers. you got to know. And here's the cool thing, is that some people, especially they're entrepreneurs, are like, oh, man, you just said the, the curse word. You said the N-word. You said numbers. Right. You naughty boy. That's another N-word. So they said numbers, like that's just horrible. And, uh, and I'm like, hey, here's the thing, is that everybody teaches you, especially financial advisors, because they want you to do business with them and just trust them and throw money at them. This is what I used to teach, is that if we wow you enough with our intelligence and how complex it is, you just turn your money over to us and just let us do it for you. Which sounds so nice and awesome. But I gotta tell you, whenever you're passive with anything, you're gonna lose it. And whenever you ignore things, you will lose it too. You know, it's just pure simple. Whatever you put your attention towards expands and grows. So what about people who, you know, track money like in a spreadsheet or they just simply track it with their bank or something mm -hmm. like that? Like, but they're not, they're sort of generalizing, you know, like, yeah. oh, I know I spent about $20 on that or, you know. Yeah. So do you find that people who specifically track in something like Mint mm -hmm. versus round you know rounding up or rounding right. down that that is where a lot of money is really being just dribbled out yeah oh, absolutely yeah again it's, it's guesswork right and then a lot of people most of what they do they say well I track my money every month and then what they're really doing is they're watching their account balance they're right. seeing if the checking account balance goes up or down oh I got 200 bucks I can spend 200 bucks right, right. that's kind of how most people usually work um, most people it's like oh crap I just spent 400 and I had 200 Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they get the twenty dollar or whatever you know overdraft fee, and then they then they wonder where all the leak is. In fact, I had a couple that they weren't entrepreneurs; they're just typical employees making really like twenty five hundred dollars a month. That's it, and uh, they're in the hole three hundred dollars a month. But when we looked at it, we or not in the hole, sorry, two hundred fifty dollars a month. But when we looked at it, they had about three hundred dollars a month they were blowing mostly in just bank fees. Wow. So we're like, wait, you're in the hole two hundred fifty, but you're blowing three hundred just bank fees. We just get make sure you actually spend money when you have it and you're paying attention. You'll be fifty dollars in the positive. We can pay down this. They only have like a three thousand dollar credit card, but to mm -hmm. them, it felt like a massive amount, right? Sure. With the amount of money they're making, it's like cool. Well, then we can pay that off and get that done with, and you'll feel great. And so we did. Got them positive cash flow because we got them to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and think about it. I mean, anything in life. This is how you know it's a true financial principle. If it works anywhere in life, it works here. Right. Pay attention. So pay attention. Like if you don't pay attention to your health, what happens to your health? Next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're in the hospital, right? You don't pay attention to your family, you don't have a family anymore. You don't pay attention to your money, your money is gone too. You've lost it, it's gone, kaput. So we gotta pay attention to it. But you don't have to be a brilliant genius. You don't have to be some mathematical genius to make this work. In fact, if you know how to use a computer, that's pretty much it. And so that's why I use Mint.com is because I'm one of those people, I love to be ambitiously lazy. I like to work hard so I can play hard, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like to work more hours than I have to. Um, I actually worked 12 hours last week on one day, and uh, I told my wife, I said, oh my gosh, like I felt like that was horrible. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, like, oh wait, people do that all the time. I shouldn't they complain. Do. But uh, it's funny, because I think I work all the time, but I guess I don't work that much. Nope, all your lunch dates, and you know, Adis, since, you're, since we know you're watching all your lunch dates that, that we call business. You know? That's writing that's, off. That's, yep. Lunch and play, right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah. So you don't have to do that. So I like to be ambitiously lazy. So I like to, I like systems and tools that make things really easy and simple for me. Mint is a great one for your personal money. Now, if you have a business, make sure you use something like QuickBooks. That's great. QuickBooks Online for like thirteen bucks, you can get an awesome system that makes your accountant love you. And trust me, accountants usually don't have a personality. So that's something, saying something. Oh, you said that about John Briggs? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just no, Shout out for John Briggs. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. We love accountants, you know, especially when they're they act like they're awake. So, uh, in any case, moving on. So, they love QuickBooks. They get excited about QuickBooks. I don't personally, but 
hey, it's good to know that they love it when you do things simple for them so they don't charge you an inconvenience fee, right? There's another way to free, free up money. Um, I'll tell you, like, so using Mint.com, the cool thing about this is that you can download all your information to one place. Imagine all of your loans, all of your savings and checking accounts and everything being in one place, real-time balances so you know exactly where you're at at any moment. You don't have to log into 500 websites to see what the balances are, if you even do that. Um, you can see it all in one place. They'll even track your money so you'll know every transaction that goes through. And here's the cool thing. Rather than writing a check register on a piece of paper and trying to figure out what category to put them in and then trying to take out a calculator every month, try to add them all up, which to me just seems retarded. Instead, it's like, no, we can just take it, put it into the system. We can categorize it. The cool thing is half time it gets it right anyways. And when it doesn't get it right, you teach it. And when you've taught it, it learns. So it's almost like being trying to be smart for you. It will then tell you what it is in the future. So it will categorize it correctly down the road. And then your train comes in. And it's awesome, right? Yeah, the train comes in. <laughs> One thing I really like about using Mint, which I've been using for about a year now, is that when I have a bill due, it emails me a few yeah. days in advance. So then I don't have to, you know, keep track of oh what's due on this date and That's stuff right. like that. So that and and typically, you know, I set up my bill pay in advance, but it's a nice reminder of okay, I know this is coming Make up. Make sure so, money's in the account and all yeah. that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just easy. I mean, I love as done for you as possible. Now, it can't be completely done for you where you do nothing. you got to still be active with it, and this is why I recommend people go into their, their mint.com or and their QuickBooks once per week, same day, same time. Make it a habit. Just like exercise, you make it a habit. When you make it a habit, it makes real results. When you don't, it doesn't happen. And so uh, this is where it gets to be fun because when you start to do this every week, and I've timed myself three or four minutes max, if you really want to get in depth and play with spreadsheets and reports, awesome. It might take you seven minutes to do that. But what's seven minutes a week compared to financial freedom for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Such a small investment of time and effort to make such a big result. So, and I'll tell you, especially people that have been in business, I mean, I've seen this with people, usually people are employees working jobs. Uh, we'll save anywhere from 300 to 500 a month doing just tracking their money. When you're an entrepreneur, usually at least 500 to 1,000 or more a month. Well, and that right there is 6,000 to 12,000. That'll that'll get you to Disneyland. You then you can go and you can go to the Disney Studios and watch them blow stuff up. That's right. There you yep. go. And buy a $500 bottle of water and yes. there, there's your savings, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that works. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's I mean that's so critical. And I'll tell you, the busier the entrepreneur, the more you're making excuses of not doing this, the one thing I guarantee is the more you're losing money not doing it. Um, the busiest entrepreneurs I've ever met with usually will lose at least a thousand dollars or more a month doing this, by or by not doing this, by making the excuse instead. Those that are tracking, who might find a few hundred bucks or so, um, but usually we'll still find at least something, right? Awesome. So this is a key point, starting point of every steward. And by the way, when you track money, don't do it out of scarcity. Don't do it out of a place of guilt. So when you're doing this once per week, I'd also encourage you to meet with your spouse if you're married to do this once per week as well. Um, don't don't get to this accusatory place. Um, really stay in a standpoint of abundance and look at it from a standpoint of great. Here's where we're at. What can we do this week to to make it even better? How can we make it cooler? Don't don't uh, say, man, 20 years ago, you remember when you did this? I have never forgiven you for this, and and uh, therefore I'll hold it over your head forever. Don't do that. That's just dumb and just doesn't serve you or anybody in that for that matter. Number two, this one might sound. Kind of simple, but it's funny how many people don't do this. Almost all of these things are simple, but most people won't do them. Even people that claim to do them don't do this. It's selling assets. Now, again, I say do this from abundance, not from scarcity. Selling assets, what I believe is if you're a good steward, you're going to get rid of the assets that you don't use and keep the assets that you do use. So if you got stuff sitting in your garage, stuff sitting in storage. I'm sorry, so the couch is sitting in my garage that have been sitting there since the last time I watched your webinar. It's time to actually get it's rid of those. It's time to unload. Okay, got it. Especially as we're moving to a nice warm season. Yes, garage you know, sales. We've yeah. already had our three rainy days of the year in Utah, so I think we're good for the rest of the it's year. It's supposed to rain the entire weekend. I know. Yeah, we're actually going to turn green. Yeah. Amazing. So, uh, so yeah, so with this, I mean, get rid of, get rid of things. So you can donate it, one. You can donate up to 500 bucks to a charity without having to itemize all the things that you donate. Um, on your taxes, that is. Um, so you get a write-off, which means you free up maybe an extra hundred bucks or so in taxes. Um, and you know, if that's not the case, then you can even go, go and sell it, you, whether it's through Craigslist. Some people in Utah have things like KSL.com. That's great. Whatever's a great classified source for you and where you're at, that's a great place to start. 
Um, it can even be something like you're saying, like a yard sale or garage sale. We're actually doing that this weekend where um, we finally went and cleaned out a, a, our big little crawl space storage and, and uh, some of our, our stuff, and it was amazing how much junk we found, uh, stuff we haven't even seen since we moved five years ago. Um, and so we're like, man, we've got more stuff. We hope we sell this just to get rid of it, you know, so we don't have to take it home. And so, uh, I mean, and we've done that. I mean, there's been some really lean times that I've had because I've, I've been in places where there's been ne ne really bad negative cash flow, uh, and there's times that we've sold things to make it through those months. And I remember one summer we made, like, over 2000 bucks selling things off. Yeah, I remember, or, you know, my next-door neighbor in, in my old neighborhood used to do, you know, one or two big garage sales every summer. Yeah. And when she would put out her stuff, I would just throw out a few things. And I remember I once sat out there from 7 to 8 a.m. And I just said, I'm just going to come out for an hour because that's the hot time that people show up. And I made 150 bucks just sitting there. And I thought, that's 150 bucks an hour. I yeah. should do this every week, you know. <laughs> so Way better than Napoleon Diamonds, a dollar an hour. Yes. Yes, I made it to two thousand. Told ya. We're not. We're like halfway through. This is there sweet. Go. Yeah. I think I just scared everybody with that slam, didn't I? Probably, but it wasn't the train. It was you. That so. was just me. Yeah. yeah. So cool. I mean, that that's a great point. And and what you just brought up, I think, is is the magic behind this. Is that yeah. if you think about this, is that this is not just selling off stuff. That ultimately, money is meant to be accelerated, not accumulated. Right. It's meant to flow and grow, not to stagnate and permeate and stink, right? Mm -hmm. It's meant to flow and grow, not stagnate and accumulate. So when we do that, when you get that extra 150 bucks, that's $150 you can use today. Mm -hmm. That's something that can start benefiting your life today to create more cash flow today. It's like a week's worth of groceries Yeah, today. Yeah, you know? it could be a week's worth of groceries. Yeah. I mean, how about in your business? I mean, 150 bucks. You just spent 197 on a webinar mm -hmm. yesterday, right? Yes. How much do you think that webinar will make you? Oh, a ton. It was a really valuable webinar. Yeah. Um, in fact, it what was interesting, and, and I invest a lot in my training, and I know you do as well, is yeah. that the more you invest in training, the more it triggers your own brain and how you uh, you know, approach your own life. And so right. even and, – and I'm a big believer, even though I've seen your webinar before, I, it, it's a good reminder. I'm thinking, oh, okay, sell assets. Right, that's what I need to do. Right. I need to have the yard sale. I need to get that. So it it automatically kicks you into accountability. Right. You know, and you may not even know the person, but they keep you accountable for learning new things, and then it's up to you to implement them. Yeah, that's exactly it. Well, and you brought up another great point. I think it's important when you're listening to this too, because if you notice, I'm keeping this really simple because money should be right. It shouldn't be all complex and hard. It should be simple. But I'll tell you, it's not so much what you know. It's what you go and do that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is not power. Wisdom, which is applied knowledge, is power. And that's where the real experience and everything that comes from this creates real results right now. And the faster you act on this, the more it's going to make a benefit. In fact, there's an exponential benefit the faster you act. That means every day you don't take action, exponentially more you're losing mm -hmm. because we're losing time. We don't know how much time we have. Money you can always make back, but time you can never get back. And what memories are we costing ourselves? What are we costing ourselves by not doing the things that we need to be doing, by not being able to free ourselves and create more in our lives to have those memories and have that experience that we hope to have on this planet because the thing is we can't take this money with us, but we can take the knowledge that we gain, the wisdom that we gain, the way he takes the relationships that we have with us too. That's why we call this company Wisdom Window. Yeah. You know, because it's it's your how you're learning and how you're applying it and how you view wisdom through a window. Because your yeah. window is the world. How you view the world is through a window. And when you take that wisdom and you like you're doing today, when you take all the things you've learned, I mean you yeah. you know, financial advisors make a lot of money. You could have just yeah. stayed in that field. Easily. Easily, knowing that you weren't serving people and that you weren't in integrity. But yeah. taking your wisdom, it has a it has a ripple effect. It does. Wow, That's like a money name, ripple. Money ripples. It yeah. was inspired. Yes. I love it. That's right. And so it yeah, yeah, I mean you can't say enough. It's a wisdom window, not a knowledge knowledge wall. Right. right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Knowledge wall, wisdom window. That'll, that'll, yes. be the, that'll be the next one that makes no money. So yes. there we go. Um, so uh, third thing, so we'll, so we said one was tracking your money, two selling your assets. Now third is coming to debt. Yeah, I love this one because this is a one that just really gets people all shifty in their seats and mm -hmm. makes them all feel uncomfy and stuff. 
here's the thing I have to say about debt, uh, especially from a steward perspective. Debt is not to be feared. When people tell you to get angry with your debt and to fear debt and to hate debt, is that scarcity or is that abundance? And remember what I said about scarcity. Does scarcity make you money or cost you money? Now, many people that try to have that attitude towards debt, they do progress, but they don't progress the way that they should be. It's very slow. And even when they get out of debt, here's the problem. If you ask people what their definition of debt is, debt is typically something where they say, well, money I owe, right? Would, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's money I owe. Well, that's great. Here's the problem. Even when you pay off your loans, your AKA debt, the thing is you will always owe money. You will always have to spend money. I've had savers that were like extreme savers say that they're spenders because they had to spend money on bills. And they felt guilty for spending money on bills. Um, they might even feel guilty about spending a little bit of money on their, on their spouse. Ouch. Ooh, that just hit somebody just now. I felt it. Mm -hmm. You know, but that, that's the thing is that you can't, you're always going to be in financial bondage if you believe that debt is owing people money. You will always owe people money. As long as there's exchange, you will owe people money. If you want to be broke, you don't have to owe anybody money. You can just go live in the woods and in backwoods, Canada or Montana. You can go ahead and wipe with leaves and you can, you know, try to make your own clothes out of tree bark and you can eat berries and, you know, go totally paleo and everybody and, and have a great life maybe. I mean, awesome. But even, you know, it was funny. I attended a seminar where they talked about, like, even if you own a house, you still have to pay property taxes. Yeah. So even if you own it outright, yep. like, you will there's still always pay. A cost. There's always a cost. And so, you know, embracing that mentality that there is always a cost but that isn't debt is really powerful. Yeah, I agree. And that, and that comes to a real big principle here is that you own nothing. You don't own a thing in your life. You control it. You're a steward over it, but you don't own a thing. You come to this world with absolutely nothing, and you leave this world with nothing materially. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you know, I mean, come on, the pharaohs of Egypt believed that they'd actually leave with their riches. How did that work out for them? Yeah, we're all finding it now. Yeah. It's in museums all over England. <laughs> it went to somebody else that eventually died yeah. and mm -hmm. lost it to somebody else, and so on and so forth. I mean, it's just not – I mean, to believe that you own things and that you owe things is really kind of a, a very, kind of a, a, a very short-term temporal philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's there. We're all, in that case, we're always indebted because it's not ours. We're basically borrowing everything on this planet, right? Mm -hmm. But as creators, we're trying to create more. And so now I want to get to debt because I want there to be a strategy here, but I want you to understand that debt is not to be feared, but it is to be respected. Stewards respect debt for what it is. It's neither good nor bad, but there can be good or bad ways to use it. If you're using to purely consume and it doesn't make you anything, you're just spending and spending, it's not a good thing. So when spenders use debt, they use it and they blow it, and it doesn't work out well. When savers use debt, they go into crazy fear mode, and it doesn't serve them either because they don't understand it, what it really is. And when you're a steward, you understand that it can be used as a great tool or it can be a, something that can hurt you too. It can either help or hurt you depending on how you use it. And, uh, and this is a great topic that I love because when it comes to this, when it comes to cash flow, there are some debts you may want to pay off and some that you don't. My basic philosophy is this, you know, and this really comes down to the strategy is when I'm looking to pay off a loan, and by the way, I call them loans. I don't call them debt. I might call them liabilities, but we'll call them loans in this case. When I'm paying off a loan, I want to pay off the one that has the highest payment with the lowest balance. Highest payment with the lowest balance. Or in other words, I look at paying off my debt much like an investment. When I pay it off and I put money towards it, what's going to create the most cash flow for me with the least amount of dollars out of my pocket? Mm -hmm. And so I look for that proportion. What's going to be the lowest balance with the highest payment? So if I had two $5,000 loans, one was a $5,000 credit card, 100 bucks a month. The other was a $5,000 car loan at $400 a month. When I look at common sense, and I'm sure you would too, you would say, well, if I want to be in the best financial position possible to create the best security for myself and the best freedom and peace of mind, well, I want to get rid of that $400 a month payment if all I have was 5000 bucks, Because that $400, that means a lot. Because that creates options. And remember, options create freedom. So when that four hundred dollars is freed up, you, it's, especially if you have a bad month, maybe you have a crazy expenses because you have to go get braces, or maybe you have a bad month of income, you do not want to be paying four hundred dollars a month, do you? Right. you? I mean, if you had the choice, what would you rather pay? hundred dollars a month or four hundred? Hundred dollars. Of course, a hundred, right? But see, everybody else will tell you, oh, we'll pay off that credit card because it has a higher interest rate. No, that's not the reason to pay it off. 
And by the way, $100 for a $5,000 $5, credit card is pretty standard for a credit card. It might be 120, 125 at most, usually, is what I've seen. So, so many people say, oh, well, I gotta pay off that credit card, because all the interest, but then they pay off that card, they only free up 100 bucks, then they have a bad month, or something happens unexpected, and then they have to go and charge that credit card up again, because they didn't free up enough cash. And the next thing you know, they're charged up the credit card, they feel guilty. Uh, I just had somebody recently, and she really badly wanted to pay off the credit card. They've been pretty decent savers. They charged up some credit here recently, and in fact, we just talked two days ago, and she said, Chris, I gotta tell you, man, like, it felt so good. You had me put half of my money to savings, half of it towards paying off these specific loans. And we had already like refinanced her debt. We did like refinance her mortgage, which is a great option in a lot of cases. Refinance that to free up $1,000 a month to then pay down some other debts mm -hmm. and also to, to be able to put more in the savings. Well, some medical things came up for her and all of a sudden she said, oh my gosh, like this is the first time when we had something like this happen that we didn't have to run up that credit card again. Where it's like this rubber band, you pay it off and it goes up again and pay it off and goes up again. It's like now we have the savings to be able to pay for that and we're still paying down our loans. We're still paying down our debt. And that's because I said we got to look at this from a steward abundant standpoint, not from a scarce saver standpoint. And, and that's what made all the difference. This one I found tons of money because I mean, we've had people where they've done this kind of thing. They said, wait, well, we can pay off this loan and free up more cash. You know, I had one, one couple from Minnesota that did that just at one of our events. And, and they said, wow, we just freed up 2000 bucks a month. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. Cha-ching. You know, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's what's so cool. And, and this could be a whole big topic in and of itself, but I want to kind of get you to a few other points too. But, man, this is an awesome one for sure. Four, taxes. Because Uncle Sam wants you, right? Mm -hmm. He sure does. He loves you. That old weird guy with a beard. So, <laughs> oh, man. I hope you don't mind if I have a little bit of fun at least because you know I teach this all the time so I gotta mix it up somehow Absolutely. and I'm actually doing this for Heidi because I know she's seen this a million times and probably so is Adise so so anyways uh, so yeah so taxes um, this one again I'm not an accountant so please do not take this as being gospel for you guys like please don't take this as advice um, these are just things that work for me and this is working for me as of the current year so if you're watching this five years later this may not even apply on some of these things we're talking about but uh, I'm gonna talk about first if you're just an employee a few of those items, and then also for your business owner, which you can do there. But again, I'm not an accountant. This is not a recommendation. Go talk to your CPA about this. If you're an employee, you don't have a whole lot of options to save taxes. You've got kids. Great. That might give you some taxes. Um, definitely, you can donate to charities, and they can do that. Um, if anybody ever tells you, especially an accountant, that putting money into an IRA or a 401k is saving you in taxes, fire them. That is so not true because it does not save you anything in taxes. In fact, it might cost you more because if you, if you don't pay taxes today to only pay that money later because you always have to pay tax on those things later, well, why would you want to wait till later because our taxes are going to most likely go up or down in the future. Well, I think everybody would agree it's pretty much likely to go up to pay for some of the things that are going on right now. Well, if that's the case, why would we want to be taxed when it's higher than when it's lower today? Mm -hmm. That's not a savings. So 401ks, IRAs do not count as tax savings. That is a lie and a delusion. But um, there are things you can do. I mentioned charity. Uh, I did also mention too, like we talked about donating, like you can give to Goodwill. You know, we talked about that. You write off $500 or more if you itemize. Um, one thing you can do as well is you could start a side business or something that's a hobby that maybe could turn into a side business. Great tax advantages there, and you'll hear why in a, in a few minutes. But huge things there. Another thing you can do too is, and this is one that's kind of counterproductive, is that if you're paying interest on like your mortgage, for example, this is the thing that everybody tells you is so evil. The thing is, is that what happens to most people as they get older, they freak out because they have no tax savings because their kids, hopefully, <laughs> I say hopefully, it's becoming less and less true, hopefully move out. And then secondly, that when you pay off your house, there's nothing more to write off in interest. You're now exposed fully to taxes. But if you're leveraging money as a good steward and you're able to use that money more productively elsewhere to be able to m make more than enough to pay off your mortgage, well, then there's some real benefit there and you're getting tax savings on the interest at the same time. Now, what if you're a business owner? Business owners get a lot more. I mean, if you can make anything a business excuse. A decent and lunch. A decent lunch, for example, totally a write-off. And, uh, and that, dad, gum, I saved that receipt and wrote it off. Adis, let's go to lunch. <laughs> Adis, you just got invited to lunch by everybody on this webinar just now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So anyways, uh, so yeah, so you can write up almost anything. 
Um, you know, so travel, meals, like we just mentioned here. Um, travel, the great thing is I love to take bizcations. Um, I did that in the month of December. I just did one. Yeah, that's right. You just got yeah. back from one in yeah. the same place I went in December. Yeah. You went to? Did you go to Oregon too, or just Washington? Well, we drove through Oregon. Drove through Oregon. You yeah. blinked and said hi to my hometown. Right? We waved. We yeah, waved. it was pretty quick. It was yeah. like two stoplights. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, I I went through and like you know just like just like Hattie did went through and and I made sure I went to you know I went to you know lunch and we had dinner tw two days with the same people that were potential clients. Um, I went and visited some of my other clients. A lot of them were chiropractors out in Oregon, so I went to visit some of their offices, check them out. Um, now, by the way, this is this wasn't like all day long. I spent a few minutes with them and said, "Cool, um, I'm going to have fun with my family." And mm -hmm. I did. I did a webinar from Washington. It was sweet, yeah. you know. In fact, I did a tax webinar and got a new client from it. There you so go. So I'm like, "Wow, cool! I'm like on vacation. I'm making money. This is so awesome, right?" Um, so I mean, all these kind of things you can do. Um, cool thing is, is like you can make almost anything a business reason if it's legitimate. So, for example, I always I always tell people that you know, what if you want to go to Six Flags amusement park or Disneyland or something like that or Disney World, well how can you write that off? Well some people say well I can invite a client or a potential client to come with me or a customer. Yeah you could. Um, you could definitely do meetings there. It could be like your next meal place. So Heidi, why don't you invite Adise to Disneyland and go go meet at Pirates of the Caribbean restaurant. Well we've right? talked about taking our families because you know I'm good friends with Chris's wife and That's he's right. good friends with my husband. We've talked about taking our families to Disneyland and then over lunch we'll you know, talk business. <laughs> so we've we've joked about that. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, like, all my all my friends, pretty much, either we do business or have some sort of thing like that. Or a lot of my friends are not everybody, but a lot yeah. of them are. So hey, you might go to you know go to I want to go see a guy. Maybe I might ask my accountant because he's always awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I go out and see a movie with him, and we write the whole thing off. You know, right. things that we'd be spending money on anyways, you have to write off. It's it's awesome. Um, things also with medical expenses. There's a lot of ways to write things off like that, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Um, here's a great one because I know we're going to run a short on time if I keep going. But um, one thing you do is you can actually do a corporate rent agreement with your home if you have a home office. Lots of write-offs there, but uh, for many people, um, this is where your five thousand might come back. Is if you have if you're profitable in your business, uh, one thing you do is you actually start paying rent for your, your place of your domicile, your residence, or whatever your home office one day one day out of the month, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you get to write off that full amount. You know, rent almost like you're renting a hotel room and. Write that off. It could be anywhere from like ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year. You're writing off to free up three to six thousand a year, mm. right there. Oh, and hire your kids. By the way, there's lots of ways to do that too, and, uh, and that's that can be thousands. And especially if you're using that to pay for other expenses, you're now getting a write off for expenses you don't normally get a write off for. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So many ways. I won't go into everything, but it's it's awesome. For many of you, if you're profitable in your business, all your five thousand dollars came back in taxes alone. Which, by the way, um, even when business owners tell me that they have a great accountant. We usually find at least three or five thousand dollars that they're not taking advantage of. In fact, this year, this last year, year and a half, every time anybody's been profitable in their business, we have found tax savings of at least three to five thousand a year. Which is huge. That's thirty-six thousand to sixty thousand. Yeah, and that's not even counting that they write off paying for me because, because hey, just like with you, mm -hmm. it's business related. Right. Because hey, we get to write that off too. So even what they do with me, they're writing off and saving twenty-five percent right there. Right. There you go. So, income. This one's awesome. Uh, and this one I could do a whole other webinar on, and I won't. But uh, I'll tell you because I'm going to run out of an hour, so I better get moving, right? So income. This one is great. The basic principle here is this: if you want more money, you find more ways to create more value for more people. The deeper the value, the better. Now, when I and let me go back to 2006, because when I was able to retire, what shocked me is I was really only creating value for maybe two or three people a month. That's it. It wasn't much. wasn't a whole lot to make you know an extra four or five thousand dollars a month. You know, at least with the value I was doing. Now the difference was I wasn't creating like a tiny amount of value. I wasn't like selling them a book. I was creating a lot of value through the relationships that I had through financial people and things like that. Mm -hmm. So as I did that, I said, "Holy cow! Like, I'm, one, I'm, I'm making definitely more than a dollar an hour. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but two, like, it's a huge win for them. And because it's a huge win for them, I'm getting paid well and very handsomely too. And uh, and that was a big epiphany. It wasn't time for money. Everybody likes to trade time for money, but you got to trade value for money." The deeper the, the the greater the amount of value you can offer, the more you can charge, the more you can ask in return. Because if whatever you're offering to them is worth more than what they pay, they'll do it. If it's not, they won't pay. Mm -hmm. So people ask me, what should I charge for this? I don't know. Do they pay you know, charge this and if they don't pay you, then it's not valuable enough, or you're not showing enough value or something like that, right? Um, and this is also too where I tell people like uh, to be passionate, uh, you should definitely be passionate about what you do, especially if you're in business. 
heck, even if you work a job, I hope you would be passionate about what you're doing as well. If not, I would hope you'd find that. Um, but I'll tell you, it's not about, it's not do what you love and the money will follow. That's a bunch of bull. So not true. Because how many passionately broke people do we know out there, right? Many. A lot, many. right? Yeah, there's a lot of people that are very passionate. They love what they do. They think they're the best in the world at what they do. But they're broke. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people, it's not do what you love and money will follow. But it's do what you love that others love you doing. And then the money can follow. And I say can because this is why you should be on Wisdom Windows. This is why you should be learning because if you don't have the right skill sets involved, if you don't understand money well, if you don't understand business well and marketing and all those things that, that go on with what you're doing, you're going to fail flat out. So you're just, it's just going to totally, it's going to fall flat. You're going to be broke, plain and simple. Even if you, what you do is valuable and other people see it, you'll still find yourself broke because you don't have the skill sets. But when you do create lots of value and you have the right skill sets and you do love what you're doing, man, that's, it's almost impossible to stop you from succeeding. Absolutely. So, you know, kind of backtracking, five things. There's really five things that you need to be focusing on over the next year that you've learned in this hour. So yeah. one is track. Track it, track it, track it. Right. Whether you use Mint, whether you use QuickBooks, whatever you use, track down to the minute dollar because that's where a lot is flowing out. Number two, sell assets. Have that garage sale that you've been thinking about having. Yeah. Um, you know, get things put together. Uh, you know, I was amazed a few years ago I actually did a garage sale and we made twelve hundred dollars in one day. Mm -hmm. Well that was like all of our summer stuff, you know, all the play stuff that we wanted to do over the summer. So it was perfect. Um, number three, the way you know the way your mind approaches debt. Like mm -hmm. understanding that you don't own anything in this world, but that you're a steward. And so if you have things that you're not using, other people can use them. Whether you donate them or whether you sell them, it doesn't matter. If you donate them, you can use that as a tax write-off. Right. If you sell them, then you have immediate cash flow. Right. Number four, taxes. There are so many different things that you can do with your taxes from, especially if you own a small business, from um, renting out your office from, you know, or once a month, hiring your children and using the money to pay for their clothing and the things that they right. need. And, you know, the, the one that I really like is, um, is donations, yeah. you know, like donating to causes that are important to you and getting the tax right off there. And then five is make more money. Yeah. You know, but, um, I, I was just telling Chris that I have, um, I work with a lot of different people and, you know, I, I never know when they're going to need something, but when people contact me and they say, can you do this? And I know that I can, it creates value for them, That's which right. creates cash flow for me. So all of that, everything that I've learned is because of education. And right. that's the biggest piece is that if there are things that you are struggling at in life, if it's your finances, if it's your health or whatever, education is what overcomes those struggles, period. That's the only thing that you really need because once you educate yourself, your mind will never be the same. The way that's you right. think about things will never be the same. You can never take that away. You can take all your money away, but you can't take away your mind. Exactly. I exactly. love that. Love so. that. You know, I'll, I'll add one more thing to that income too is that when you have, I mean, you know, we talked about, you know, adding value, but another way to look at this is how do you create win-wins? Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is they want something from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great. Well, all right, you want this. What are we willing to negotiate as a fee? Right. And what are we willing to negotiate for that? And it doesn't always have to be money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done, I've done barters and trades where I'm like, you know what? I want this from you. Mm -hmm. You want this from me. Let's work it out. Right. Um, it happens rarely, but when it does happen, if it's done right, it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But money just makes it easy to exchange. It makes it easy because then you don't have to say, Let's figure out what we could trade, or you know, make it like Settlers of Catan game. You know, where you're trying to figure out how to like mm -hmm. go and trade all kinds of weird resources to finally get what you want. It's much faster Rocks with money. Rocks and sticks, yeah. Rocks and sticks, and lumber and iron and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So I mean, make, making money, and the reason why we focus on making money too is because a lot of people just focus on trying to be cheap, right? Mm -hmm. How to decrease their expenses? Because the previous four really dealt with expenses. Where are you paying money for stuff? Mm -hmm. But you can only go so far before you run out of room. This is why when we talked about it, you, you corrected yourself. You said, wait, don't no, find you know, $33,000 a year as the average client. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because it's, it's either save or make more money that we usually find that money, right? It's, uh, it's got to be both. And I love the making more money part because mm -hmm. that's limitless. Yes. And that's fun. 
and and it's cool because even me, I mean, I still learn things all the time. Like just just really yes. yes. Oh wait, Adi said eight trillion gallons of water, eight trillion are pumped out of the Amazon every day. Every day? Did she really? Oh, that's what she said. She's, Thank you. She's your fact checker. She is. Yeah. There's a lot of trillions and billions going on here. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. We're abundantly abundant when it comes to people and water and money. Yes. It just flows. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I, with the uh, what was I saying with the income part? I make more money. Yeah, I know it's make more money, but uh, uh, I, oh, oh yeah, yeah, what I just learned. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I have a consultant that, that they've been coaching me as well, and they said, "All right, well, you're doing great with these events, and you're doing great with you know getting people to coach with you, and that's awesome. What about your products? Do you have anything like that?" Oh yeah, I've had products for like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, do you sell them much? And I start laughing. I'm like, "Oh yeah, like sometimes. Like I've got all six disc CD set. I've got a single disc, you know, that I have online. I've got now a book that came out that's online. I've got." All this stuff, and I'm like, I think I advertised it for it once last year, mm. and that's it. I haven't done it for a year. She said, "Why not just do that? Like, why not make a promotion or special with that and offer some cool things?" And I thought, yeah, that would be brilliant. I've I've never solicited my products. Yeah. Amazing, which is weird because like that's the stuff that doesn't take time out of my schedule. Right, it's already created. It's already created. It's yeah. stuff that could be ongoing. It could be like mailbox money, like you're seeing here, right? And that's really what Wisdom Window is all about: is creating yeah. products that people can use and that they can have access to at any time, all in one platform, where right. they can go and get their training. So they can get health training, they can get financial training, they can get business, they can get personal development, whatever they want. They go to one place. For that training, so it's perfect for someone like you and your Wisdom Window provider mm -hmm. to have your products on there so that people can access it at any time. And in fact, you do have your free CD, mm -hmm. your your free audio on Wisdom Window, and yep. we'll be adding this PowerPoint. So members of Wisdom Window will be able to download the PowerPoint, and we'll also have this webinar up there, so yeah. they'll be able to get that information and find out how to work with you more. For sure. And by the way, that free audio is actually $10 on my website, so yeah. go to Wisdom Windows to get that audio. Absolutely. Sure. So are we done with the PowerPoint? Do you want to... Um, yeah, I just finished up the last thing is that you know, cash flow is cash freedom. Flow is just freedom. to reemphasize that is that if you haven't figured that out already, mm -hmm. it is about cash flow because it creates more options and more options create freedom. Awesome. And so that's the big point. Okay, so I'm going to take the reins back over here, and there we are. Here we Yay! Are. Hi. So we're so um, glad that you joined us today. It's been really fun. Um, you know, shout out to Adis for putting up with our teasing you, but I really do want to do lunch soon. And uh, we next week we're going to hear from Rebecca Clark. Have you, nice. you know Rebecca? I know Rebecca. Yeah. Rebecca is the queen of Nudge Village, um, which is an accountability group that's online, and she is going to teach us how to find your entrepreneurial niche um, or niche if you're on the East Coast. That's how you say it. Anyway, but uh, you know, it, and it kind of tags off of what you are talking about with making more money is that a lot of people want to be in business and then they think, well, I don't know what I would do. So Rebecca's training will help you kind of get to that level of what what are my strengths and you know how can I really serve people. So Absolutely. we're excited for that. So that will be next Thursday, same time, same place, and watch for an email or uh, you can go or you can always go to wisdomwindow.com and get more information. Thank you so much, Chris, for um, being here. Did you mention the slides? Did you mention that yet? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. So we're gonna have this um, this PowerPoint presentation up on Chris's profile which is under business training and you'll see his mug his picture and it'll say money ripples and you'll be able to download this PowerPoint presentation as well as have access to his free audio and um, this webinar will be on there so you can review the information and then you know you can reach out to Chris and find out how to work with him more because he has a whole program that helps you to find that five thousand dollars and more really more. five thousand dollars a month for, for some people, um, absolutely. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.